Hello and welcome to the Nintendo Pipeline Podcast. I'm your host, One Up Muffin, also known as Jared, and with me today is... <laughs> hi, it's Clay. I'm CMM. And also, hi, it's your host, Ness underscore. That's me, the host. You're the host, too? We have two hosts tonight? I'm the host. Oh, no. my God. Well, I'm the host. host. Oh, the host. my. Uh, today we're talking about Splatoon 3. Um, we This game came out about a year or so ago. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I finally got around to beating the single player. Uh, so we're just going to kind of... Um, let's We're going to go through each kind of part of it. We're going to do um, single player, multiplayer, salmon run, competitive. And then uh, share our final thoughts of the, the game. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of fun along the way. Maybe make a... Have some laughs, make a few jokes. How does that how does that sound uh, to y'all? Awful. Just a couple of jokes. I don't I don't like that many jokes. Podcasts yeah. are serious business. Yeah, we're this, as our one. livelihoods. We're not yeah. gonna be jokesters or but we're gonna be I, a little lighthearted. I guess it would go without saying that if you have not finished the campaign, at least be warned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be warned. I mean, the first like twenty minutes are gonna be all spoilers, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the campaign is like an hour long, so like if you haven't beaten it yet, just pause the video <laughs> or the podcast, go play it. I I literally I was on world two, and I did the rest of it, not barring like the bonus level in like an hour and a half. I don't know. That's you being a pussy. I'll do it later. I just don't really care. <laughs> I I wanted to at least see the end of the game. Uh, Is that really what you did? (laughs) Did I what? You just like didn't play the game and then also beat the game? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. No, I just like kind of like mainlined it. I like I did. I 100% of the first two worlds. And then I kind of just rushed to the end to see like the story. Yeah. Okay. If it makes you feel better, um, I 100% of the first area. And then I accidentally found all of the speedrun skips, basically. And then I beat the game. It wasn't even on purpose. It wasn't even on purpose. What do you mean purpose. accidentally? I was just like, I wonder if I can jump over this and then like move around this. And then I can't. And I was like, okay, cool. I guess I'm not playing any level here ever. Oh, so you like jumped over like the fuzz? Yeah. Yeah. The fuzz. What the fuzz? Um, but, uh... So Clay, you 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 <laughs> played, you played, played the it. full single player. I actually yeah. played it. Yeah, <laughs> you um, played this video game. I, I I'm one of those weirdos who uh really really likes the single player content in Splatoon. So I hundred percented the um single player. Um and yeah, it's very very good. I think it's a big improvement over two. Um, that's not it, saying much. I mean, what do you think was lacking in two? Well, with two, I, I don't even mind twos that much. Um, I think it's fine for most of the way. It's really the final area of two that I thought was annoying just in terms of navigation. And some of the stages were like kind of eh. Um, this is more like Octo expansion. Um, and uh, so the stages, you, you can't use every weapon on every stage. Um, but most stages let you choose between um, a few different weapons um the thing that was one to three usually yeah usually it's like one or three um and the the stages range um there's some that are very clearly supposed to be like main stages so they don't have um they don't have you um pay a fee but most of the stages you pay like some kind of a a fee to get in similar to i I think i think the fee is useless the fee is pretty nominal yeah Um, i i feel like it just shouldn't exist with how yeah well, it's like we we're, inconsequential we're... it is yeah yeah it's just... like really annoying for me i i guess i don't know just because like you already have to like pay to get rid of the fuzz mm-hmm. and all the fees are like small enough to like not really matter yeah it's like so you like fuzz will be like you know 800 or like you know 1500 or whatever and your fee will be like you need to pay 30 <laughs> it's kind of yeah it's completely <laughs> it's very yeah. like yeah it's when you get like negligible. a thousand three hundred salmon bucks for beating a level <laughs> just paying 30 just feels like uh why huh 
Yeah. Like there's um, no it's not like a risk versus reward thing. Yeah, it's just like a weird thing. And and some of the stages again have no fee, so it's kind of whatever. Maybe that's just a leftover from Octo expansion. I don't really know. It it either way it's kind of whatever. Yeah, um not, I mean not, to be fair, whenever I ran out of like salmon bucks to unlock stuff, um I I would play like A level or I would just go back to area 1 and do like that Two second sniper level. No, oh, the big bang. and then just like pause buffer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a there's a trick where you can pause buffer to get like more eggs than you should, which is kind of funny. Yeah, so it's just like frame perfect, but like every frame before, um, before like where the like cutscene is where it's like you beat the stage, congrats, you get like 300 salmon bucks. Um, you can just like frame perfect pause, and every time you do it correctly, you get another 300. So if you can do it like five times, um, you get like what like two thousand for just like the two yeah. second like mission. That's, yeah, that's something. Um, but yeah, so the missions are everything from like two seconds to like longer stuff and everything in between. Um, each yes. world has a some bunch are of like them. traditional. Um, yeah, platoon one and two levels, and some are like mini games. Like, uh, oh, go and have like the crab tank. Uh, which is like a special ability where you have this little tank that can roll around. Yeah. And you'll play like the whole level as that special ability. Yeah. I love the Zipcaster ones of that. Yeah, those are cool. Yeah. The Z- Zipcaster is like a Spider-Man type like hook thing. Or if you played, um, what was the game? Chameleon Twist? Yeah, it's basically just yeah. Chameleon <laughs> Twist. Um, Yeah, it's like um, you just like push down like the bomb button or something. And then... Like you just zip cast to wherever you want to go. Yeah, and there's like a tiny bit of an explosion. Yeah, you're Spider Man. Um, uh, legally distinct Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, the so there's a bunch of worlds. Um, and they're kind of neat. So honestly, the thing that I thought was most fun about the campaign wasn't the levels. I, I did enjoy, but I actually really enjoyed kind of like getting rid of the fuzzy like mm-hmm. ooze and yeah, it kind of exploring the overworlds and like you know finding all the hidden stuff some of it is very silly because sometimes you'll ink an entire area but because you didn't ink a specific like pixel at the right spot like the thing the pickup won't spawn it's very weird yeah you often um, have to like spray a spot for like a full second for like the thing to appear yeah it's kind of weird um but basically, yeah, the, the, the rhythm of the game is beating stages to get power eggs and then using the power eggs to blow up some of the fuzzy ooze so you can move around more of the, the overworld. And sometimes that will spawn like, you know, a special item um, like a locker decoration um, or like the, uh, the upgrade currency in the game. Because you have a like like previous platoon campaigns, you have a like skill tree of sorts. Um, where you can upgrade like your weapons, um, you know, get additional side weapons, um, stuff like yeah, that. Like, you can increase the little buddy's like health and like yeah consumption. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's kind of like the main like mini gimmick where you kind of toss him around in certain points, and he can kind of like help you. Like he'll distract uh, enemies, or he'll reach like certain platforms that you can't reach, and like blow up boxes or you know whatever. Yeah, and I mean like you can do all those things with bombs, but. Like you have a yeah. little guy. He's a little guy. Yeah, he yeah. is a little guy. Um, um, but yeah, so the game is pretty. If you do, if you're going like through like every stage, the campaign's pretty lengthy. Um, it's you know each world. I know like some of the early worlds don't have a huge number, but like later worlds, I think it's like twelve stages. Um, yeah, it goes stages. yeah, it's it's a lot. It's between like eight and twelve stages per world. Yeah. Um. And then uh, the bosses are fun as well because it's uh, mm-hmm. the um, deep cut uh, members and they're that's a spoiler by the way. Yeah, well, well I mean we, we said we that warned, we said we warned you. Everything. Oh yeah, totally. But I'm just like if you haven't left already. Yeah. Yeah. Like leave now. We're <laughs> yeah. we're getting into spoiler spoilers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the deep cut fights are really fun. Um. I think Big Man's was the one that made me actually very happy uh, when I saw it uh, because Big Man's is, is so funny. I big, was like, yeah. "That's the Mario Sunshine." Yeah, <laughs> it, he, it's big. big I, I'm retroactively, I've decided that Big Man is the manta ray that you fight in Mario Sunshine. <laughs> he <funny>. did it. <laughs> the biggest uh, man, yes. Yeah, yeah, the three bosses were all pretty, pretty different and clever. Yeah, I wish that there was like 
a boss per world, but it's a boss per every yeah, other world. Yeah, some of the worlds you don't even need to go to, really. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't mind the fact that there's no, not a boss in every world, because it feels like, I don't know, uh, at least in, like, Splatoon 1, like, doing the boss at the end of the world kind of felt like a slog. Like, mm. every world, there's so many. But, like, yeah. that it's, like, every other world in this game, so it's, like, not really that bad. Yeah. I feel like it comes up just enough, and it's, like, they're all creative enough. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah, really they are. Mind even. Something oh. I really liked is how, uh, like the levels are still like random floating platforms, but like the hub world is more like grounded in this one. I enjoy. Yeah, the yeah, Alterna yeah. is a neat like location. an ice base area. Yeah, I like that the different areas have names and are like somewhat distinct from each other. And there's like, you know, so like when you play the game instead of the sunken scrolls being in stages like they are in past campaigns the sunken scrolls are hidden across the overworld um so you have the sun the sunken scroll lore still but they have another thing now where every time you beat a level each world has like a log essentially and beating a level like fills in part of that log to make it readable um so if you beat every stage in a world then that world's like full log is available and you can like read the full thing and see all the pictures uh, which i really liked um that was fun for me to to fill out each log um and it's all like lore and story stuff which is fun um sort of like dark souls (laughs) sure um i would spoil what the the like macro of it was if i knew I've well, heard some stuff, but I don't know enough to like be able to like it. The the hey. TLDR is it kind of explains what Alterna is and how the squid uh, inklings like kind of came to be. Like it's the story of that essentially. Yeah. Um, and uh, the other thing I should briefly mention is that before you get thrown into Alterna, there is kind of like a brief intro section where the game kind of makes you think it's going to be like the previous Splatoon campaigns, getting like mm-hmm. you know the Zapfish or whatever. Um, and they even have DJ Octavio show up early as like the tutorial boss, which is kind of nice. It was nice that he's not the final boss again. Um, yeah, it was actually really neat being like, I, cause I went into it knowing just a couple spoilers. I knew that like there was a tutorial area and there was like Alterna, like as a concept and I like, right. knew about the final boss and I knew about like beef cut. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, that's, that's very cool that like, you know, there's just a mini Splatoon, like one or Splatoon 2 campaign. So yeah. And you get into like, just like brand new stuff. Yeah. It's like so different and like creative. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, you're still technically after the zap fish, but I guess the mini zap fish are just kind of there, sort of, whatever. Um, Which is very, it's th- three games in a row all trying to get the zap fish back. Yeah. Although it's, this one's, silly. this one, I think, I mean, you don't really need a like crazy, like, general plot for splatoon just steal thing get it back is fine um, I, I know I, I just think it's funny that, like stealing the zap fish is their version of uh rescue the princess yeah that's true um but so what i think is really interesting is you know once the is the end game um so once you beat world you know area six and more specifically once you've got beaten all three bosses to get like the weird junky treasure that they have um, you go into the end game, which, uh, is the rocket area, um, mm-hmm. which as soon as, so the game pops the map up of the, of the rocket area. And I'm like, holy shit, it's a Wiley castle. That was like mm-hmm. my, my first reaction is it's a fucking Wiley castle. And I was so <laughs> stoked. Um, I didn't even make that connection. I was yeah, just like, like, oh damn. It, it, it shows it sh- like each time you beat an area, it shows like the point on the map and there's like a line and it connects oh, it. And I'm like, that reminded oh, me God. of actually the Castlevania. Uh, yeah one yeah i thought of that the nes one or, yeah. or ghosts and goblins too yeah it's it's like it evokes that thing but the wily castle thing was just so like it was so visually wily castle that that's the one I'll that i thought of look that later. um it's a neat it's a neat and unexpected ending for the game and it definitely goes on a bit and i know some people are like oh it goes on for so much you know for so long but i honestly really liked it um well, i and... didn't i didn't mind the length i i don't think they should have locked you out of the main area though yeah yeah like, um, I, I feel, into, I feel like, like it'd be a lot less bad if you can just like take a break. Yeah, because it's like yeah. you have to do like five stages in a row. I, I did think yeah. the final boss is a little too long. The final uh, boss, a bit, a bit too many stages, like a bit too many sections for me. I, yeah. I understand why it's like that, and it feels very like 
I don't know. It feels like very epic, I guess. Yeah. But it, it's, yeah, it's a long boss. It's a so yeah. long. It's, it's, um, it's, it's long and some parts of it are not that fun. I honestly really liked the boss. I mean, it was long, but I like thought it was a really good um, way to kind of like test a bunch of your, you know, like a bunch of your skills all at once. I thought it was pretty creative. Um, the one stage I would be okay with being chopped off from the the rocket segment is the first one where you like lose your weapon and just have to toss small guy or small fry oh, everywhere. It's so long. Yeah, it feels yeah. it feels way longer than it has the right to be. Yeah, yeah, it, that yeah. One wasn't great. I would have cut out the uh, the spaceship part at the end. I, I didn't think that was very fun. Oh, like the I, final, it took me final. so long to do the spaceship part just because like I'd be like I can. I can like not get hit here and then I'll be fine and I'll just do this cool thing and then it wouldn't happen. Yeah. Cause I, I, cause I, cause I was in a VC and I was just like not, not even paying attention to the game and I would just die. <laughs> I'd the, have to do the whole thing. Yeah. The, the, the rocket part was cool. And then the spaceship part is kind of gimmicky. And what was really funny though, is that all of a sudden Splatoon turned into Sonic Adventure two um, <laughs> for that final boss, like a, like very weird parallels. Um, like, to that game um, I definitely thought of it like for being the amazing mirror where it's like right before the credits you know that like in the boss there where um after you do like all the hard parts and it's like really long you do like the, the same boss like four times yeah and then you're in space you just have yeah. to like mash the button oh, yeah move around. i think it's like I that like robobot had something like that too a little I bit yeah. So. yeah but like small fry literally turns into like supersonic and then it's called big fry and whatever <laughs> yeah and then macro fry <laughs> and then mr grizz is like bio lizard and even has like the like little pustule things that you need to blobs that you need to blow up like it's very funny i thought um, mr grizz is gonna be the grizzco guy and i was disappointed when it wasn't it, he is the grizzco guy he is, oh, he is? Yeah, yeah he is the grizzco what? guy the grizzco guy is a bear that's, that's yeah that, that's grizz. why they want like Salmon eggs or some. Stuff. Yeah, that's why oh, he. Yeah, that makes sense. Man, yeah, <laughs> I don't know a lot about the Splatoon lore. I guess I should have been reading more of those alternate. His, his dialogue was so good too. It was very yeah, funny. Was funny. Um, but yeah, so like the the rocket area, there's like little segments where you walk in the rocket overworld just to kind of get to the next section and listen to a little bit of story, which were short, so I was fine with it. Hmm. And then the stages were very cool. There's like that Spider-Man sequence on the inside where you have to get like the like yeah the orb things. Um, that kind of reminded me of a Sonic Adventure two thing as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's really neat. I, I feel like that entire like last area was just like the equivalent of like SA two like last story. Yeah, <laughs> where it's like you do like the entire game and then it's like well do it do it all again but like shorter and more condensed. Yeah. Splatoon 3 last story is pretty much yeah. what that is. Um, the ending is but really like, cool. Even though we're dogging on it a lot, it, like, it was still very fun. Like I, very I, fun. It was my favorite part, honestly. I was thrilled. Yeah. Um, again, the first stage is kind of like, eh, with the lack of weapons or, or anything. Um, but mm. um, by the time you get to the end, it's like, it, you're like, Jesus Christ. Like, it, it's just kind of insane. Yeah. Um, I remember one of the attempts I had on the spaceship because I failed the spaceship like a bunch of times. Me too. Um, I, I felt both of those boss parts a few times. The 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 what's fun about failing the spaceship though is that they have like a special game over mm -hmm. for for failing it, which I thought was really cool. I thought it was really cool, but I wanted to skip it because it was so long. It's long. Yeah. It was like a minute they, and a half. They let you skip it after after you the first time. Yeah, yeah. after the first time, but like yeah. it was yeah. like a minute and a half that I just had to sit through. Yes. Yeah, I was like, "Oh shit! Please tell me I'm gonna be able to try this again." <laughs> uh, I was like, "Did I just oh, get just, the, bad, just got the ending? bad ending?" Yeah, I, was, I just got the bad ending. Um, but there was one time where I almost did it. It was at the part where at the end where you just have to like keep firing until the screen fades, and I got caught. Like, you know how the the spaceship there's a little like hatch that opens and you go inside it. The hatch yeah. was up, and I got caught on the back side of it. And I like spaghettied so hard it was ran out of time that I didn't make it back into the hatch in time because I kept like sticking to the <laughs> back of the hatch. Oh no! Uh, but the, the, um, the first time I played that boss, I didn't realize you could move the ship forward. I thought it was kind of just an auto. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was just an auto firing thing, so I kept like trying to vacuum the thing up, and I'm like, "This is not working." Yeah. It's just the, not doing anything. 
And then yeah. I, I just like was almost out of time. So I was just like, okay, I'm just giving up. Dude, it's even like, even when you're moving the ship around, it's like the whole supersonic segment and like he's shooting the stuff at you and like if yeah. it hits you, you go flying backwards. Like it's so like. It's the same thing. It's very funny how similar those two are. Um, but yeah, the um, campaign is really fun and you can get a lot out of it. Um, there's a lot of unlocks and stuff that you could find that help in other modes, like the locker decorations or like the tickets. Um, there's some other stuff too, like you can find the scrolls and the upgrade juice. I, it's like they're like upgrade fish or whatever. There's like the music records, which I don't totally understand because it's like the music here will now be different. I'm like, all right. <laughs> um, so when you 100% explore an area, something that's kind of fun is on the um, Splatoon 3 Splatnet uh, 3 uh, uh, app in the Nintendo Switch Online. You get like little like doodads for for 100 percenting stuff. So like mm -hmm. it'll the game like it'll just give you like a silly wallpaper for like every area you you clear, which I thought was cute. Um, but the post game is, uh, there is a bonus stage and it's pretty much the champion's road of Splatoon three. Um, and I would actually recommend that people suffer through it, uh, because it gives you an entire extra log that explains a lot of neat stuff <laughs> that the game doesn't bother to tell you about story wise. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's like a gauntlet level and it took me like, it took me at least like three hours to get through. It I, I've heard horror stories. I've never I done it yet, but the I first don't, area, I don't think area, I would do that to be honest. The, the first area is honestly the hardest. And after that, it's not that bad. Uh, the first area. And then like the final area is probably the, the hardest because the first area just kind of goes on a bit long. It's not like hard. It's just like the final challenge in the first area is kind of hard. So if you fail it, you have to start from the beginning and you'll probably fail it if you're like me. Um, the second area is like a rail target section, which isn't too bad. Uh, the third section is more like puzzly and it's not that long and it even gives you like a little checkpoint in the middle. It's pretty easy, actually. The final section is just an arena battle with a bunch of uh, Octolings and they all have the different weapon types and they also get access to the special like super moves that you would have access to. Um, so it's kind of wild. There's like three waves of them and it's just kind of nuts. It took it took me a while to like actually do it. Um, I but... heard about people speedrunning it. But... <laughs> what? I heard about people speedrunning it. But the, it's kind the of the final area or the yeah. final stage. Yeah. Yeah, like the champions road type stages. Yeah. I heard so much stuff about just like it being hard and the run like kind of dying. Yeah, I mean the the final part I feel like is probably the easiest way to kill the the run of that mega stage because it's just like it's usually it's like nine octolings at some point or another spawn into this arena and they are very good at just murdering you and yeah, it's kind of random um, and. Yeah, it's, you know, the, the very last wave is, like, you need to, like, hop between the the giant special moves to, like, even, like, not die because they're just constantly using them on you. It's kind of hilarious. Um, very satisfying to beat. Um, and then you get access to this thing, which I thought was cute, and I'm not entirely sure how it works because I got all the collectibles. But um, what's-his-face? Sheldon has a little drone that you can send around. You can pay at Power Eggs to fly around and, like, pick up items. So I'm like, all right, I'm slightly curious because I'm 100% in this. What happens if I pay it and it send it off anyway? And it seems like what it does, at least if you're in, at least if you're at 100%, it'll bring you back like a random decoration for the locker. Um, I don't know if like you're not 100% if he'll actually like go and find pickups in the actual like areas. But basically you pay him and you have to wait like a day for him to come wait, back with something. Wait, how do you unlock the drone thing? It's when you finish the, like, when you finish the campaign, when you go back in, um, there's a Sheldon drone where the, like, weird treasure stuff used to be. Oh. Um, so, don't entirely know how it works. I did it, like, once or twice just to see, like, what it would come back with. Mm -hmm. Um, it won't bring you back, like, it's not gonna, like, bring you, like, 
you know, it's not going to give you any credit for doing logs or whatever. I don't know if it will mm. bring you something like a sunken scroll, but it did bring me a couple decorations. But again, that's after I 100 percent it. So, yeah, I should um, try that out since I have 100 percent of it. Yeah, I guess yeah. kind of see what happens. Um, but yeah, I thought it was really fun. I think it also, you know, single player in Splatoon is always the most like isolated element. Like most of the other modes and features kind of feed into each other. But this time around, I felt like they they tied it in a little bit better. Like, obviously, you can't, you know, bring like your crazy like hero stuff like at the level that you have it upgraded to into competitive. But like, you know, as is Splatoon tradition, you get the hero gear when you finish the game. You know, you mm -hmm. get some decorations for the locker, which is, you know, displayed in the multiplayer. You get some tick like drink tickets and stuff. So like it kind of connects a bit more i um, wish the hero replica gun had a different special that would have been yeah interesting. so your it's default just, it's literally just a splatter shot yeah you're, you're... yeah i mean i feel like it won't be as much as a problem like later into the game's life when they actually add yeah other splatter shots and like other versions of the weapons i thought it was weird that's not that... in there yet i thought it was weird that the hero like you know splatter shot gun or whatever like in the campaign the the like special that's associated with it is the splashdown but the multiplayer version of it it is not the splashdown <laughs> yeah the it, is, splashdown doesn't, it doesn't even exist in the game anymore really other than yeah. in single player yeah it's kind of weird it's just, just it's just reef lighter now <laughs> so yeah. weird which like isn't better <laughs> really yeah Much better anyways uh i have one question for everyone mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. we move on to talking about seven, seven runner multiplayer uh so after like beating like the main story, mm -hmm. uh, how does it compare to the other single players from the other Splatoon games? Um, I'm counting two and Octo Expansion as separate things, but I'm counting yeah. like all the like special amiibo levels and like Splatoon 1 single player as like the same thing. Um my I like personal Splatoon 1 a lot. Uh, yeah. I do like Splatoon 1's campaign a lot. There's something about it that feels correct. Like hmm. it's each level feels substantial. Um, yeah, uh, there's something about yeah. it that I really like. That being said, I think the Splatoon 3's campaign is probably my favorite of them. Um, it's definitely better than Splatoon 2's campaign. I like yeah. it a little bit more than Octo Expansion because it's a little bit easier to like the progression is a little bit easier and the difficulty on the stages is a bit like it's not like insane uh yeah some of the ones in octo are like really really frustrating which i kind of get because it's supposed to be like you know it, it's supposed to be more challenging but like some of those stages were just really annoying in octo this one doesn't really have that going on outside of like one stage in like world five um where you have the bow and it's like a target shooting one uh every other stage is like difficulty is like decent there's not like any weird difficulty spikes or anything um and then that yeah. whole final section where it's like a wily castle elevated it for me as well as the overworld exploration stuff so i'd say it's my personally threes as of right now threes is my favorite with split i like one how being every second. level in one felt like a full level like some of these yeah. levels just feel so dinky like you start yeah. it you load in and then it's over in like two seconds yeah where yeah. it's like paint this statue it's like that's not challenging you're just just yeah. repetitive the idea i think is that like you need to do the levels that have no entry fee those are kind of like the main levels i guess and those are the ones that tend to be longer um and the ones that like you know that the game clearly like wants you to do before you go to a new area um mm -hmm. and i see the others as kind of like side challenges like in yeah. octo expansion um, and they're fun. Like, there's a lot of fun yeah. ones, and I'll, I definitely want to do more of them. There's I do a ton wish I haven't done yet. I do wish, yeah, I do wish that the like levels maybe like were a little bit more like Splatoon one in some instances, where they kind of feel fuller. But um, at the same time, I feel like everything in Splatoon three campaign kind of like adds up in such a way that like it. It, it works out really well and i also think mm -hmm. it's fun because you don't need to do every stage and you could if you wanted to you could go like a different route while you're going through single player like everybody's going to kind of do it their own way um and that's not 
that's not including like you know unintended like speed run skips and stuff like that but yeah it's it's open-ended in a neat way yeah so i'd like to see that concept explored more like i know they're I've... planning a an expansion <laughs> um dlc I hope the expansion is actually i hope the expansion is fully different because we've yeah. had we've had the traditional platoon one experience twice yeah and then we've had now the octo expansion experience twice yeah so it i'm feels hoping like it's time for something new i'm hoping that the expansion is like fully open and is more like the overworld sections of that would be cool i would like that a lot of it yeah. of the campaign than the than the individual levels because i i think there's more they can do with that and yeah. it's fun i'm kind of tired of like the floating just yeah. random floating stages yeah because they're so at odds with splatoon multiplayer which is all like very grounded stages well the whole point is that they're like supposed to be like separate closed off weird areas like there's octo yeah. canyon in the first one um i think that's what it's called maybe it's not called octo canyon but that's close um, enough and then the section that you start with in splatlands um visually is really cool and i'm like oh that's fun like maybe splatlands campaign will be kind of like that deserty sort of look but then you get thrown into alterna which is very much <laughs> like floating <laughs> floating junk <laughs> It's an ice world. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's a weird. The the thing that makes Alterna better for me than a lot of the other ones is that they bothered to like build up the lore of Alterna in game, so it feels mm. like a place, and you can kind of see how stuff went down. Yeah, like it feels substantial. Yeah, um, as opposed to like you know Octo Canyon or like places in previous games where it's kind of just this vague like, oh yeah, the the Octarians live here or whatever. Yeah. yeah, like there are people here that we don't like. I think we should take it over, maybe. Yeah, like the race war continues. You know, like what? <laughs> but it's just, it's it's weird because like the the Splatoon hub or hubs, like the multiplayer hubs, are so lively. Yeah, and like uh, they feel like places. And then like it, it would be great to have a game that was like in the actual Splatoon world. Yeah, I kind of yeah, I'd like that too. Um, at the same time, I also kind of like that the single player is like so different. Like the game, the game has a lot of distinct things going on. Um, it really does. It's 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 basically like one of those Call of Duty games now. Like they have like the the three distinct parts, and you could be into like one or two or three of them. Yeah. Like I mean, it, it literally has its own version of Call of Duty Zombies and multiplayer and single player. Yeah. yeah. One if, thing. If I, you don't think yeah. this is Nintendo's uh, Call of Duty, you're 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 wrong. No, it's I, actually Nintendo's TF2. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There's um, the single player. What did, What did you yeah, guys think? And the overall, multiplayer of single player compared to the other. Because I know you guys kind of barely play the single player. No, I I, I play I the single okay player a, a lot, but with two, I couldn't like commit myself to like trying to beat it i like i didn't uh, it was it was a slog like i didn't basically it was a Splatoon slog. 2 or octo i i would like to go back to them at some point but it's not a high priority i finished all yeah. of them except for octo i need to go back to octo and do that at some point in octo i just got annoyed and kind of stopped playing and then other stuff mm -hmm. came out or whatever but um i need to play octo because i don't own it but i could yeah. play it i mean if you, if have, you have if you have Nintendo expansion expansion pass you don't have it oh i don't you have should it. you should join someone's someone's expansion pass. yeah i'd, I'd say join i'm on i have no spots <laughs> i'm on someone's like online which is like fine because yeah. it's just like five dollars a year or whatever but like we don't yeah. have the expansion pass yeah gotcha i pay my i pay my friend ten dollars a year yeah mine's yeah, actually the, the... expiring tomorrow so <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's get, let's move on to multiplayer. Sure. Uh, we gotta yeah. we gotta we gotta hurry this up a little bit. Multiplayer. Um, uh, multiplayer is where hot I take it's fun. Hot take it's fun. Hot take it's fun. Hot take it's, fun. Take, it's, uh, hot take, it's the best Splatoon has ever been. Yeah, I, yeah, I I want to agree with you. Um, there's a couple of things that like hold it back for me, but like in general, yeah, I agree with you. It's the best multiplayer out of all the Splatoons. I just wish the netcode was better. Yeah, because yeah. I've never I've never had this many trades in my entire life playing Splatoon <laughs> one or two. Yeah, there's a lot of trades and there's also a lot of 
connection error. Oops, you dropped. <laughs> There's also a lot of uh, people kicking their router when they start to die, and then they like teleport back. I yeah. hope that stuff they can try to fix a little bit. But overall, like the actual game itself, it's got Fantastic. it's got the most amount of maps at launch, which is great. Yeah, it's got a nice amount of weapons, including some new um, some new ones, which they showed in the trailers. Yeah. Uh, it's just, the balance is fun. I think the the way ranked mode works is awesome because I was I was like kind of scared off ranked mode in the other game, so I never really dove into it. But I, I love it here. It's it's my favorite stuff. Yeah, I've only played uh, the Anarchy ranked and open, and I've done it like occasionally because I'm not like super, super into ranked. Oh, you got to do the series. That's the like, fun. Like if I, fun see, if I see like Rainmaker or Tower Control, I'll usually like, all right, I'll give it a couple matches. Right, if I see Clam ones. Blitz or no. Splats, if I see Clam Blitz, I'm like, eh. If I see Splat Zones, I'm like, hell no. I don't, I'm not a Splat yeah. Zones person. Wow. I hate Splat Zones. Splat Zones is fun, but it's like... I, <sighs> I I always it. tend to get like really terrible teammates. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's so hard to carry like zones. It, it's awful. It's hard. I prefer I do prefer splat zones to to clam blitz, but clam so like I like clam just, blitz yeah. for open, but I would never pick clam blitz for theories because it's just too inconsistent. Yeah. I love clam blitz for uh, like playing competitively. It's so fun when you have like that like communication and like coordination mm, yeah. yeah with with like both teams because like it's an actual game and Which it like never feels have. very fun yeah yeah but like yeah. If, you, if you just play opens you never have that and then it's just like like tommy 2007 right yeah just like walking around picking up clams and then dying and then picking up the pity clam and then dying and then <laughs> picking up more clams and dying yeah i was i played a match of it just to kind of try to figure out like kind of how it was played and that's kind of all it was was like we went on it was like what like a three minute match no one scored it went into overtime for like three minutes and then someone finally scored and that was it and like yeah. all that was happening was like someone would get some clams maybe about to do something then they get splattered and drop their clams and then the other team would get a bunch of clams about to do something and then they would get splattered and drop all their clams and just rinse and repeat for like 10 minutes and i was like yeah, I, I think right. i think it's my favorite mode though especially with like the communication i would just never play it to try and rank up yeah that makes sense. yeah I, I i think rainmaker and power control are both like brilliant uh brilliant versions of payload and um capture the flag and i think they're both super fun yeah i like them yeah i've always liked them in previous ones um, I, I think i i still like turf war a lot but i do find myself having more fun in in those two modes turf like, is very fun except yeah. um it, it's not it always has to be taken very casually because like basically the first two minutes 15 seconds don't matter <laughs> yeah yeah it's all about that scramble at the end yeah um i i enjoy turf war a lot that's probably the mode that i'll play the most because a lot of the time either the ranked mode that i want to play isn't there or i'm kind of just like i'm not in the mood for like something yeah. particularly serious um I was like, an don't awful be, don't, map mode combination don't be afraid yeah. of series like yeah series uh, intimidates me don't don't be it's it's really not it's so it's it's very easy to gain points like you, you're much more likely to gain points than you are to lose any even when i also play don't worry ranks, you don't break down you just go into the negatives <laughs> yeah, even if i go into like um the ranked modes and stuff the one thing that drives me nuts about um splatoon 3's uh multiplayer is it feels like it takes forever to level up like yeah it takes oh, it's forever really to to like like i can play a bunch of matches and still kind of feel like i've gotten nowhere and like some people you know play tons and tons and tons of matches and so it doesn't really bother them but mm -hmm. like i don't like the standard multiplayer as much as other modes in splatoon and the game mm -hmm. kind of punish it feels like it punishes me sometimes for not it does yeah this yeah. game is better about it because like they have the catalogs now which kind of unify a bunch of modes and like the, the locker the, stuff the catalogs are like i don't know the catalog's fine but i just don't care about that stuff i just want more weapons i, yeah. I just like the Splatoon well, battle pass it's it's very cool yeah. that they <laughs> added a battle pass into the game yeah the catalogs the catalog is the thing that i like leveling up in because it's not i think it's every level is 7500 points um 
if you get a single win, it like gives you a huge experience boost in that category. So like it's easier and it's fun to to level up the catalog because I can also do it through Salmon Run. Um, you know, it's like you have some options there. Um, but your you know your main level is always going to come from multiplayer, and so as a result, you know. For example, like previous Splatoon games, you need to get to level four before you can play Salmon Run, um, before you can play um, the Table Turf thing, before you can shop. In yeah, table Turf is like, what is it, level five? I think it's level four as well. Which is just wrong. so silly. Why? Yeah. And I actually really I like ter Table Turf. I haven't played it too, too much yet. But like I, as someone who does not really like card games, I actually genuinely liked it when I played I it. I think Table I'm Turf still is working. very fun. Though I wish it actually had its own menu and just not like an overall yeah. thing. You have yeah, to like walk I, up I'm to working the towards trying to like max out my like Table Turf. Yeah. Because I want to be able to fight everyone. You have to you have to walk up to the dumb bitch in the um you know, the, the hub. And it takes forever because it's not like you have ink to make yourself move faster. So you're like, yeah, I like looking at the posts fun. on the way. It's like, yeah, I always see like the most like unhinged stuff. That's funny. It's it's like one one picture could just be like, like I have to like turn my switch sideways, and then it's like some inkling with massive boobs, and it's like okay, oh, yes. and then that, the next one is like I'm gay, RT, if you agree, and <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah, I've seen some, like muscly furry art, yeah, in there, which is kind of. Like, uh, why is this in Splatoon? But... And then, and then there's like, then there's like the posts that are just like, "Big man is my man, <laughs> big man number one." I'm like, hell yeah, baby. <laughs> and it's like, I love Splatfest, and Tricolor is my favorite mode. And it's like, please get away from me. Yeah, you scare me. <laughs> yeah, it's like the the hub. I still really like. It's just I wish the menu, the quick menu, had everything. Like, yeah, me too. I just stumbled into the recon bitch the other day. Just kind of like, oh, that's a person. I'll go talk to them. They're like, this is the recon thing. I'm like, oh, right. This is a thing you can do. I totally forgot it existed because it's just some random NPC oh, standing. Yeah, somewhere. I hate that. Um, to be fair, I've like never muted it because I always, yeah. whenever I need to recon, I just go into. Uh, I think most people just, go, just to, like, go in. Metal. Yeah. But like for table turf specifically, it's like really annoying. Um, yeah. Yeah. And like, uh, I also wish it was easier to get like, uh, table turf card packs. Like, I wish that was more consistent. I you get a ton of them in single player. That's where I yeah. got so oh, many okay. with single player. Okay. Um, I got a I got a a like crap ton by just like playing multiplayer. Yeah, um, you get a lot from the you get them from catalog leveling up the catalog gotcha. as well, and also um, mystery boxes too. I think. Yeah, the mystery boxes are kind of whatever for me. I, I mean, they're whatever, but. The other thing too is that again, merch is standing next to the lobby, which is fine. But when you want to talk to merch to pick up an order or like scrub your gear or like whatever, you have to slowly trot up to him in the hub because he's not on the quick menu. I love um, walking up the stairs to go to merch. It's my I, favorite. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, stuff like that. The thing that kind of unifies the game across all the modes for me that I really enjoy and it's completely unimportant but it's like my favorite thing is the locker stuff where you can customize mm -hmm. your little yeah. you know your little cubby of of random doodads like buying stuff from hotlantis that's like the only one that i've gotten the badge for buying stuff from so far because that's the only shit i care about <laughs> that, that's the only one i don't have <laughs> it's like i go in that's and like funny. oh what dumb shit is in the hotlantis day Super, super you, squid. Call it what it is, Clayton. Call it what it is. It's hot topic. It okay? is hot topic. It is hot it's topic. It's hot topic. Go to and, hot topic. And some lead singer in a band is just hanging out there, okay? <laughs> yeah. Call it what it is. Yeah, okay? it, is, it is hot topic. So I go to hot topic and I buy like, oh, it's, uh, I think it's like, I think there's a, there's a game there that's Donkey Kong Country, but it's called like Super Squid Country or something like that. <laughs> that's um, funny. And there's like random like you know comics and manga and like strategy guides and stickers and like cushions and then there's like weird shit that you get for your locker that's like way too the art's big. Amazing. Yeah. Um. It's really impressive art. Yeah. And how much detail they put into everything. And I really like that. Like you can put the weapons that you own in the locker and like the clothes that you own in the locker. Um. But. To get a bigger locker, you need to get like to level thirty, I think, yep. in multiplayer. I think it's and like I'm fifteen like, and thirty. Okay, because I'm glad fifteen at least because like it takes way too long to 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 get a larger yeah. locker. 
I thought also, I'd find some, like there's some items that you just can't fit in your locker no matter what you do, which is annoying. It's, it's very precise when you are putting your locker together. Well, if it's no, like I mean, there's some items like they let you rotate them. Yeah, like you you can rotate a barrel to have it like face you. Yeah, but it doesn't fit in your locker that way because it's too long. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, and it, but it is also super precise where it's like if you go like a pixel outside of the bounds, the game's like no, n not happening. Um. And it is kind of funny how the locker has physics. <laughs> like, if you put stuff I like in, the it'll yeah, you can just drop stuff. <laughs> it took fun. me took me way too long to like stack the the manga like spines correctly so <laughs> that they didn't tip over. It's like a meta game in and of itself. Um, but I really like looking at what other people come up with, and I like playing with the locker and like all the stickers and like the sunken scrolls you get like stickers of, um, for the locker. From single player same with the like maps of, of alterna so like all that stuff kind of feeds into the locker system very well um yeah, even even salmon run you can get some yeah. stuff that you can put in your locker yeah salmon and run. like salmon run salmon run i just really enjoy generally because for me when playing salmon run like it's it's you even like you can play a few matches and still get something out of it um because of like the capsule rewards um, yeah. and it's, you know, it's a hundred per and every month they have a new, you know, a new featured gear. So it's very easy to get the featured gear, first of all, which is what fine. But like, if you do the super bonus, um, sometimes you get this like a massive cash payout, which is great. Um, which is because, useful for everything because money yeah. is used for everything in this yeah, game. Yeah, Money mm -hmm. is universal. So it, it's great. You can play salmon run for a bit and like get a decent amount of cash out of it and feel like you did progress. Whereas for me going into multiplayer and playing a few matches, it feels like I've not gotten anywhere. <laughs> Anyways, Clayton, unrelated, yeah, do you want to play um, some Salmon Run after we're done recording? Um, I have to shower, but uh, <laughs> later tonight, I would actually be down for Salmon Run, yes? Yes! Salmon okay, that's all I wanted to of, ask. Salmon, Salmon Run's a lot of fun. Salmon Run's my favorite mode for multiplayer. I I tend to like PvE stuff more than, than traditional, like, you know, on at least online. Like, I don't like if I'm if I'm playing with like friends, I'll be fine with PvP. But if I'm playing online with like rando people mixed in, I'd rather be doing co-op than than mm -hmm. killing each other. And I love enemy hordes and and that kind of stuff. So salmon run is super horde, fun. Horde modes, we call it. yeah, or horde modes in general. Salmon run is super fun. Um, I like the idea of the boss salmonid thing, but in practice, it's kind of annoying. Um. You have to fill up that meter on the right as you play matches, and then the higher the meter is, the greater the chance that a king salmonid will show up. Um, and it's fun when they do show up, um, but the rewards that you get for beating them versus how much everything costs is like, oh, it's terrible. So tiny. yeah, you have to do like four. <laughs> it's yeah. so grindy. Like and you have to do like yeah. four, and you have to have like the max like bonus. Yeah. yeah, and you have to like also cross your fingers that you get scale certain scales because like they have very low drop rates um so that part kind of sucks um uh how is this uh how is this salmon run compared to like splatoon 2 because i didn't play splatoon 2 spent a salmon run like at all and like i even got to like skip the tutorial i didn't skip it but i i had the option to skip the tutorial because i had splatoon 2 save data oh yeah um, I like it. It's better. better. I played it once. It's better. It's I don't know better. how much better, but it's better. It's definitely better. Um, the, for one, when Splatoon 2 launched, there were like two maps for Salmon Run, and they didn't add any more for like a year. Um, this time, at least, we got the four to start out with. Um, with the with more weapon types, obviously, that makes the the pool of of weapons that you can get more interesting. Um, and I do think that like the new bosses that they've included in some of the new events that happen are, are pretty fun. Um, the King Salmonid thing is really the main new addition um, mm. for it. Um, and again, I like it. It just it kind of comes up too rarely for me. Yeah, it should be a little more different. Uh, I feel like it I don't should know. be a I little just... bit more common than it is. Yeah, common. And also they should have launched with two bosses instead of one. Yeah, I feel yeah. like another boss would be nice, and I hope they add in a couple. I know there's some stuff in data mining uh, 
you know, related to Salmon Run getting some new modes like Big Run or like event modes, kind of like how Splatfest is the event mode for mm -hmm. for main multiplayer. So I'm curious to see when they add those and how those shake out, because I think that'll actually be really cool. Um, but even yeah. as it is now, um, I still like it a lot because it's the progression is very fun and it's very like easy to get something for for playing um in terms of the actual rank because you have a different rank in salmon run than multiplayer um i'm stalled out i think in like professional or something like i, I every time i do well i'll have like three matches that go horribly and I'll it gets really get hard cut. like it's definitely difficult um i hate fly fish um yeah. i hate fly fish the most out of anything um those and i hate the umbrella bitch too i call it the, the umbrella <laughs> it looks like it flies in an umbrella um oh but, yeah i know what you're talking about but I, that... it's the one that like shoots the stink bomb and then it turns into like an ink ring oh um i call it the stink bomb it's like a green projectile and you can like shoot it back at it which is cool if you have the right angle but like most people ignore that for some reason and let That's it rain the metal umbrella one yeah yeah my um, my biggest problem with salmon run <laughs> is when i play with randos they don't like like if they have like like the dudes in the cars or like the eels or whatever oh, they don't like lead yeah. them closer to the basket they just like yeah. kill them at the shore and then like leave the eggs <laughs> yeah there. and all the eggs are like at the end yeah mm -hmm. to the point where like you basically almost fall into the water trying to grab the eggs that were left behind yeah i yeah. hate it so much but the... playing with friends is definitely the way to go it's so much more fun some of yeah. the some of the weapon sets in salmon run are like evil like it sucks when you're playing salmon run and like you have you know the the glow flies or whatever where it's like you know they target you and it's like a rush of salmon it's and you're stuck with like a fucking charger <laughs> it's like oh man um, somebody just doesn't know how to play chargers i mean i don't <laughs> but i'm just saying mm, like, interesting it, 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 there are I some hate weird the dynamo uh the dynamo roller in salmon run is just so frustrating I'm so bad with rollers. Like the only yeah. one I can I can like use in salmon run is uh the carbon. I can use the the regular or the or the carbon. The only I just the dynamo one is just so slow. Like the you flimza. can't kill bosses easily. The flimza I, I can't, one is okay I, too. I can't use like dock roller or mm. dynamo. But yeah. I can use like like every charger <laughs> yeah. that's in the mode. It's, it's like, fine. It's fine if if people who are using chargers are like doing stuff that people who are using chargers should be doing like killing like the bomb guy by sniping him or like you know sniping the ufo bitch or like you know can stuff you, that can makes you sense. snipe like the the trash can boss uh the fly fish or no the you know the boss where you have to like throw the, like the two grenades into it yeah the fly fish yeah, oh, that's fly fish. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, fly yeah, fish. Yeah, that's fly fish. Gotcha, gotcha. yeah, you can't you can't snipe him, unfortunately. That's so annoying. Yeah, that, that fly fish is the one that is the one enemy that like I find genuinely like really irritating in. in it's only Samurai. really irritating if like it's there for ten minutes. And, yeah, like I'm on the other side of the map, like dealing with like yeah. four bosses. Yeah, because like, that's what happens, like, right? Like, like, like yeah. Tommy 2017. Like just bought the game. <laughs> Man, he like, just, can't he just figure out how to like throw a bomb into it. He just he just got younger. <laughs> yeah yeah uh yeah it's like i'll be doing stuff i'm like all right surely someone will take care of this bitch and like no one takes care of this bitch and you're like why is this happening yeah and then i swim all the way over there eat like three eggs because i'm tossing them and no one's picking them up yeah so put them into the basket i have to go over there and take out the fly fish so i don't die egg throwing is a new mechanic as well for the salmon run. you were not able to do that in two and it's kind of hard to imagine the game without really it. yeah um, I cannot imagine yeah, the game without you throwing had, eggs. You could not throw eggs and yeah. Two. Oh, throwing eggs is a great new change. Yeah, and I like how the King Salmoned fights. Like you can shoot the eggs like at them. Like that also has a has a function. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that that's the other main thing that that changed. But what's really annoying too is when it's like you know, everyone's dying on the team, and the one guy who's still alive is just being an idiot, and then fails and the whole team yep. fails uh -huh. yeah and everyone's like like right next to the guy yeah, like, like, like little like me. lifeboats yeah. just like mashing oh, the help button help. Yeah. Please like guy please. has a roller like <laughs> yeah could just like save everyone yeah but no, well, no like just like jumps off the map into the water or like gets run over by the eel <laughs> or <Yeah>. like <laughs> you know whatever um yeah so they did oh. add a couple of bosses to the mode um and i think they're mostly cool that's the other thing i was gonna say we should talk about the splat fest a little bit 
Yeah, so uh, they've they're, changed they're, those. <laughs> yeah, they're they're three three colors now. Well, I think tricolor mode is really fun, but I wish it, you could actually play it more. They, I feel like tricolor mode is like the equivalent of like Smash Bros. Brawl. Yeah, it's like a, a, the party mode. Yeah, like Tri it's not like yeah. real. Splat Splatfest isn't supposed to be anything like crazy, but like it's not competitive. Yeah. What's nice is that the actual like criteria for winning a Splatfest now is much better than it was in previous ones because it was pretty much Splatoon two and Splatoon one. It's like if you were on the team that had the popular vote, you're probably gonna lose because uh, it would just go by like votes and it would go by like who did best and when there's more people on a team especially if there's significantly more people on a team that's more likely that people are going to fuck up and drive the percentage down so it's not you can't necessarily predict the results of the Splatfest before it even begins now there are more criteria um and I really like that like pre-Splatfest thing where you get the the conch shells the like the like kind of like the Splatfest warm up, I guess you could call it. I forget what they call it in game. Um, but like being able to kind of like influence it a bit by like doing other stuff in the lead up to it, I think is fun. I like it. Um, I know there is some weird stuff about the calculations. I think like what is it like the the anarchy or like the Splatfest professional is not weighted as heavily as like the Splatfest open, which is kind of weird. Um, yeah, yeah. Like the last Splatfest, I think. Uh, what was it? Team Team Fun got robbed. I think a little bit. <laughs> um, based on the calculations, and it, they've at least said that they're like still like working on it and like tweaking it, which is good. Mm. Um, the try the try battles are fun if you actually get to have one, and but they are also not particularly well balanced at the moment like i've never done one in my life i'm not gonna lie i've done the only time i've done them i did i did a few of them in the uh like lead up to the game like the the, the, the demo the test fire yeah demo. and yeah. like if you are on like i, I don't know it, it doesn't feel weighted correctly it's just it's weird um yeah the, the i, I just wish they had just multi-team just like regular like it's like three v three v three multi team will be a lot of fun. I think. Yeah, it's like yeah, but but weird. God forbid changing the net code to add one more person in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I think they won't do it. Yeah, it's it's gonna be eight no matter what. Um, yeah. I think they're fun. I think you get decent rewards from playing Splatfest like you typically do. You get you know the the super sea snails like you did in previous games. The conch shells are nice um, because when the Splatfest is going on, every time you level up. Um, the catalog you get a conch shell, and the conch shell you can use for a free play at the little like gotcha machine inside the lobby. I love the gotcha machine, and honestly, yeah. I think too it's worth mentioning the lobby is such a big improvement over. Yeah, the lobby's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Now. It's great that you can fuck around in the lobby while you're waiting for a match to start. You can jump in and out relatively easily. There's other stuff like the locker there and like the replay machine because I believe. This is the first time they have actual like saveable replays that you can watch later, which is very yeah. Nice. Other than just like vods, yeah. Other than just, just like, like not even in the game, yeah. yeah. So they have a built-in replay, you know, function. They have the locker area, which is great. Um, they have the uh, the gotcha machine, which is fun because you have the the tags and the titles, and like you can get decorations or ability chunks or or whatever from it. I, I think it's a little too hard to get. Um, to get a uh, splat tag backgrounds and titles right now like they just don't show up that often so like everyone has like three different names basically <laughs> that they'll use in like three backgrounds um but i do think this game does a very good job at kind of all of its systems sort of intersecting um like your whatever mode you're playing you'll get stuff that ties into the rest of the game you're playing single player you can get you know drink tickets for multiplayer if you're you can get card packs for table turf if you're playing table turf you can get like you know i think there's a an emote that you can get for your character in multiplayer if you're playing salmon run you can get you know decorations for your locker or get money that you can use on store in the stores for multiplayer like it's it's all very well tied together and it does it much better than splatoon 2 or 1 did it so it feels like 
like the game is rewarding you for playing it much better than previous games. That's like the big thing for me for for Splatoon three, um, which is nice because like in Splatoon two, it's like oh, okay, you know, you play multiplayer and you know you'll get money or whatever, and then you can buy gear for multiplayer. You play Salmon Run and you can get money, and that's kind of about it. And then like splatoon's campaign is all isolated like you got some drink tickets in splatoon 2 but that was kind of about it in this game everything ties together just so much better yeah um, it feels like a very it feels like the most complete package yeah. of any splatoon game uh in a way that i just really enjoy yeah i don't think that the catalogs need to be a hundred pages long or whatever no um i wish they were not um you know, some people have, I see people who are like, you've got catalog five now. And I'm like, holy crap. Um, I don't I'm just play never, enough. I'm, I'm never the kind of person that just plays one video game. Yeah. So battle passes don't really work for me because like, I just yeah. don't care. I don't really like grinding for it, but at least with the Splatoon catalog with that first win bonus, like you can basically almost level up like every day pretty quickly yeah you get one a day pretty easily which uh, yeah which is fine it's, it goes up i get fun extra stuff i have no need to finish the catalog well you can get the dab if you finish the catalog. yeah that's so. why i want to level up the um, stupid fine. catalog is for yeah the dab. you get the dab and i feel like next update to the catalog like next season they're gonna add the gritty it's gonna be more important yeah. than anything else i've ever seen yeah maybe they'll get the Plus. default Fortnite dance in there or whatever you know um but no, it, it is fun because like, yeah, you the, the catalog will give you all kinds of stuff. You know, it'll give you gear. It'll give you um, like even banners tickets. too. It'll give you banners. It'll give you stickers for the locker or decorations. Table surf cards, even card packs. Um, you know, so that that aspect of it and the catalog, again, you can level up the catalog in either multiplayer or in Salmon Run, which is nice. Um, so that's kind of more like the unifying, I guess progression um for the game um but yeah it's it, it's 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 fun and it's interesting and it kind of keeps you coming back because you usually when you play you are getting something when you're playing something mm -hmm. of some kind even yeah, if it's, it's like just ranking up you, you'll you get like a decoration or you'll get you know uh a piece of gear or you know you'll get enough badge, money to buy like, something yeah. yeah the badges it's, too. It's, the badges it's a yeah. lot of grind but it's yeah He's, it's not like painful grinds. Yeah, it's one of the easier games to grind in. I feel like it's yeah. like honestly easier than Apex even. Yeah. You get stuff all the time, which is wonderful. Uh there's another thing I wanted to mention. Um with What was I gonna say? Golly. Gosh gosh golly, what was it? I lost it. Though I guess the thing for me is that I like every mode in Splatoon better than the main multiplayer mode. So sometimes like my progression is is limited by that which i mean makes sense but like mm -hmm. it kind of sucks if you're looking to do stuff like oh i want a bigger locker or whatever and like to do yeah. that you, you literally have to you have to do the grind the main you know main mm -hmm. multiplayer um it's kind of annoying that the other modes can't just all contribute to that level because like I mean, yeah. it's not your ranked level. It's not so a rank. Really yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it too. It's like yeah. the other, like you level up, and like you get access to more stuff, which is fine. But I feel like the other, since it's not like a a serious like, the level isn't like a serious like level up thing. It's not like your rank. I don't understand why I couldn't just play like Salmon Run and it'll be like, oh yeah, you leveled up because you played Salmon Run or whatever. Like it's mm -hmm. not. It's not like a competitive thing. Um, I mean, you can have you could still have your own the own your own rank in Salmon Run and your own rank in the multiplayer rank modes and stuff. But like, yeah, but the, share a, the a general rank. the general character level. I feel like doesn't need yeah. to just be I you agree. know multiplayer. Um, yeah, I feel like even like character level could just be like tied to like play time even with some yeah. things. Where, like like you'll like level up. Like if you spent like you know like a hundred hours in the game, even if most of that was in single player, yeah, like you should still be like, able to... yeah, I understand why they don't do it for single player because it's kind of like that's kind of segmented off. But at the same time, I don't really feel like there's like much of a reason to not. 
But like, um, why not? Like every time you finish a single player level, give me a little bit of experience. Like it's not. Like, yeah. Not yeah. a crime. Yeah. Or even yeah, like especially catalog. so you can like get to like some of the the like the higher level weapons in like Sheldon's shop faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just because like that was like one of my big complaints with like two, but like leveling up was like a slog. Yeah. And I just wanted like you know like my two main weapons from oh. like Splatoon one, and then just like be fine with that. Speaking I mean, yeah. of that, I think they did a really. I think the weapon shop is really, really smart now. Oh yeah, you, you you don't have to get to level thirty to get the weapons you want. You, yeah. you just save your weapons for a few levels, and you can get literally any weapon you want, which I think is so cool. Yeah, yeah. so it evens um, the field more. Yeah, and if you have like a Splatoon two save data that you import, also mm -hmm. you get just like a, a few of the golden mm -hmm. tickets, like yeah, yeah, anything that you want. Yeah, like which for is free, so, basically. so nice. Yeah, it, yeah, it makes it so much better. And that was like one of the reasons why like I kept playing. Yeah, I probably oh. would have kept playing before, but like I played a lot in the in like the first few days. Yeah, so you can get your favorite weapons like pretty much right away, and even if you if you had two or if you didn't have two even. And then I really like that every time you get like weapons all of their own levels, and every time you get a uh, a weapon to level one. Mm -hmm. You get another weapon ticket, which which yeah. kind of encourages you to prep play, which it, it encourages you to use every single weapon you have. Yeah, what what Jerry is referring to is the the freshness levels of each yeah. weapon, which I think yeah we didn't mention yet, but I also think is a really cool addition yeah, did it. to the game. Um, where you just it's I think it just goes by turf inked for each weapon, and there's yeah. five uh, levels. Uh, no. I think it's also points because you can oh. get. Yeah, I thought it was points. You, it's it's definitely points. Oh, it's you, points. I get them okay. up a lot in ranked mode. Yeah, if you get a ranked win, you can definitely get them up fast. Yeah, um, but yeah, each weapon has five levels, and you can get stuff for for leveling it up. So it doesn't like make the weapon better. It's just no. you are more proficient or have used the weapon the, more, so you get stuff. The first one is always a is always a uh, Sheldon token. Yeah. The second one is like always like a sticker or something. They they have yeah, a set order. One and four are both stickers. Five is a badge. Yeah. I isn't don't remember it, what three is. I think it's another ticket. Isn't remember. isn't aren't four and five badges? Like one's like one badge and then like you get like a spiffier badge for, for level five. No, uh it's two is a sticker, four is a hollow sticker. Mm. Uh, Ooh, a hollow sticker. That's fun. In my locker I have like both the sticker and the ho hollow sticker. For like all the weapons that I play, so is I, it like, have awesome. weapons in there So too. is it just a sticker of the weapon? Yeah, it's a sticker of the weapon. Oh, okay, that's cool. I wish it was maybe there was maybe a little bit more diverse with some of the stuff you get from that. Like maybe this, maybe one of the stickers could be like not the weapon and be something like just a cool design or, or something. But like it's cool that each weapon has that going on, and if you enjoy exploring the different weapons or if you just play the game, you can end up you know with stuff just for doing using that weapon yeah um i haven't used the amiibo yet they're just gear unlocks um like last time yeah um, i don't have any splatoon amiibo so i can't try it out it's pretty much like like previous games you'll get an item just for scanning it and then depending on what your player level is you'll eventually get another item when you scan the thing again there's a photo mode and all that fun stuff um i haven't messed with any of that yet personally um the freshest fits thing is nice i haven't used it yet but being able to save different save like custom loadouts is very nice um, yeah it is i wouldn't bother with it probably but it's a good feature yeah, yeah. like if you're like oh okay here's my loadout for when I, we play you know the uh, freaking I, rainmaker or I, whatever i use it because i have like a few different weapons with like a few different loadouts that i use for them yeah just because like some weapons like i would like to have swim speed or some ninja squid with like some main saver or like some ink recovery right um so it's super useful for me, especially like in competitive. Yeah. It's nice we, that you can actually change the main ability on each gear piece this time. That's not something you could do in previous ones. Whatever. Yeah, it's it's nice because you can like have fits that look good and also yeah. have it yeah. be what you want. And that's kind of like how it is for me with like um, customization and stuff like uh, Mario Kart or whatever. It's like I don't care about the dumb min maxing stat stuff. I just want to be able to use the thing that I like using and have it do the thing that I want it to do. And so now yeah. you can do that more easily. Uh, it seems easier to get like ability chunks in general in this game. Um, sometimes when you roll the gotcha machine, you'll just get the jackpot of like ability chunks. 
The um, first time I did it, I got the jackpot of, of ability chunks. I got like ten of everything, yeah. and I still have like a lot of them. The the little the little gotcha machine. It's like five thousand coins for your first play, and then it's like twenty thousand after that, which is it's thirty thousand, I think. Oh, is it thirty thousand? Yeah, 000? it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of first play of the day. So like every day, yeah. like I recommend, just do do the one per day, and then yeah, yeah, because if you do like a turf four or two, you can just make it back. Yeah, I I usually do the first play of the day. Uh -huh. And I like getting the conch shells again when Splatfest happens, so you can do the yeah. free uh, the free rolls. It's fun. Though I yeah. do wish it was that they've made gotcha games before. They could have made the animation a little better for that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> the, the one thing I'm sad about is there's no rhythm mini game this time. I yeah, want the rhythm the... mini game back. I and what's played annoying the is like crap there's, out of it. There's like arcade machines in. Yeah. The lobby that just don't have a mini game attached to them. Yeah, I'm hoping that that Soon, maybe I hope happens I hope later. So yeah, I know there's like there's a data mine thing where there's like a jukebox that's um mm -hmm. in the lobby. It doesn't like load in the lobby right now. It's like it exists outside of level bounds. But I'm presuming that you know once the jukebox is added, it's like a sound test that you can just change put whatever music you want in the lobby, which is cool. But mm -hmm. I hope I, I can put the ink theory songs. I want the mini game. I want the mini game so bad. Um, squid jump, squid jump. I played. I played the rhythm uh, squid beats two in Splatoon two more than I played Splatoon two, the main game itself. That's um, really yeah. That's how much I like the rhythm mini games. So like that's wild. And this time around, they have table turf instead, which table turf is really cool. I would honestly recommend that people check it out because it's not like you know, it's it's the one mode that doesn't fit, but like it is actually pretty easy to understand and get into and it's fun um it's not the slog that i was worried it would be but if they had also, table it turf, has a ton of strategy for what it is <laughs> yeah mm, it really like, does all the custom card art is like really cool too like i wish i don't know if you can i i haven't seen it in there but i wish you could like display the cards in your locker because like the art on them is like super sick um i don't think you can i don't think you weird. can but like and to kind of configure your deck is a little clumsy too, because like when you go up to the little bitch in the the hub mm. and want to play, you can choose from your decks, but you can't choose to edit a deck from there. You have to go into like the quick menu to to edit your decks. So it's a little mm. cumbersome in that sense. Yeah. But you it's, do. It's cool. Yeah. The 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 card mode is like. Um, and that has its own level too. <laughs> the yeah. strategy that I I've I've found is like I just try to block them off as early as possible. Yeah. That I just I can yeah. think my side. I just tried to uh, so I haven't played too much of it so I've only played the main like map the I think it's called Main Street. It's just like the yeah. giant rectangle. And at least yeah. on that map I just tried to get as far across to their side as possible as quickly as possible in the beginning. Yeah, and, and that tends off. to work. Yeah. Um but I know there's other like yeah. maps and stuff. And and something that is cool about the the cards is that when you get cards, if you get duplicates, you get like little block or whatever and you there's a card shop that you can like you can buy cards using you know the little currency you get for dupe so even when you get a dupe it's not there's entirely a, a loss shop? yeah so like again it's kind of cumbersome but it's all in the quick menu you have to go to like the quick menu and then go to like your like i think it's like where you customize like your splat tag on the bottom, yeah. there's a button that says Table Turf Battle. And when you go into there, that's where you can make your custom decks. Um, and that's where you can access the card shop. Um, it, so, it, to, to be clear, you, you can't buy cards with just regular coin. No, you don't You don't buy cards with money. But there is a card shop where all, every time you get a dupe, it'll show you like, you know how it shows like that little square. It's like square X1 or whatever. Yeah. Um, you, that's the currency that you use to buy cards. Um, with in the card shop so again i feel like table turf would be better if it was its own segmented area um even if it's like inside of the lobby or something um because the lobby i think the locker area has like table turf tables but they're they don't do anything um yeah, yeah. It's also not... multiplayer would be yeah they're adding multi they are adding multiplayer to, to that um Currently, table turf is versus CPU only, yeah. but I think once they add multiplayer to that, people will probably pick it up more and enjoy it. Yeah, I want I want ranked mode. <laughs> That'd be fun. That would be fun, honestly. Ranked ranked card game mode would be would be, yeah, be nice. would be fun. I know it's like a little kind of 
separate thing, but they already made the effort to to make this whole separate mode. I think there's a total of 150 different cards. I'm sure oh. they'll add more in updates too. Like oh, I'd cool. be surprised if they didn't. Um, oh. But I do wish it had its own little base of operations. <laughs> yeah, maybe they'll add that later, like maybe. a card expansion. Card but shop I have, um, or whatever. One, one big thing. Mm. My the best change in Splatoon two. Three. Three. <laughs> Splatoon three. The third one. Is that you can finally skip the <laughs> intro most yeah. most of the time, unless it's like a really special thing. If there's a splat, yeah, unless fest. there's like an update or like a splat, yeah, fest. yeah. But it's just it's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it makes usually. it makes me want to play the game more. Yeah, yeah, because like now, if I have to restart the game because I accidentally requeued, mm-hmm. you just close the game and open it, and then skip it, and then be fine. Yep. Yeah, it's not gonna like be like an extra like thirty seconds. Like, oh, so sometimes I would literally be like, oh, I don't want to play Splatoon one or two because I don't really feel like sitting through a 30 second thing to play a three minute match yeah it is unfortunate though that still whenever the maps and stages update you get booted from whatever team that you're in yeah that's There's... excessively annoying my, my joke is that uh each splatoon is allowed to add like two quality of life upgrades and that was just <laughs> one too many so they have to wait wait for splatoon 4 on that one T- to be fair i do feel like splatoon 3 adds a lot of quality of life stuff yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. Um, a lot um, it's not it doesn't mean much if you if like if you didn't like Splatoon 2, you're probably not going to like Splatoon 3. But if you have played the game, you'll definitely appreciate a lot of the new additions and quality of life changes that they've that they've made. Um, so I think that's really cool. And I and I do want to mention, too, that the the Splatnet um, 3 on the, the Switch Online app is legitimately super cool. Um, I liked Splatnet 2 already, but they added some new stuff to to Splatnet 3 that, that makes it more useful. You can have, like, the widget for, like, the upcoming schedule for, like, Salmon Run and, and Battles. Mm, that's really cool. Um, they have yeah, the I have shop. the widget on my phone. <laughs> yeah, they have the shop. Um, you can look at your single-player progress and get, like, silly wallpaper rewards for that. They have that, like, m- kind of a mini game there where it's um, Sh- Krusty Sean uh, from Splatoon 2 is, like, going on, like, a voyage and, like... The amount of like area that you ink gets translated into points that you can pay to give him and like when you give him enough like there's like different areas when you give him enough to clear an area you'll get like a wallpaper or something and when you get all through all of them you get a special piece of gear so like there's stuff like that too that's fun like you can access the in-game album from there there's like a replay thing like you can see your stats and all that it's just one of those companion services that i think works very well it is it's very it's um, it, just like it's one of the best too. uses of the um yeah and as uh the, the nintendo app besides like the like uh the animal crossing one was very nice yeah as well. Spl- splatnet 2 is very good as well but yeah they stepped it up for three and then yeah uh nook link is great and i i do wish more games used that for yeah, extra features like mario maker 2 should have used that for a hundred percent mario maker 2 is a a blunder on a lot of levels yeah that's another topic but that's another um, topic um, i get it because it's a level creator uh, it's like a blunder <laughs> on a lot of levels like I did you it. did you play mario maker one ness i don't own any of them okay well quick 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 <laughs> um mario maker one you could there was a browser based thing that you could use called mario maker bookmark and it let you just search through courses and then when you click the button it would bookmark them in the game so you could play them and it was just so convenient like you could just search through all kinds of different levels and different makers and all that stuff. And then for Mario Maker 2, they put more of those functions in the game, but they didn't bring the book net bookmark function back. So like some of it's worse and it just never ever happened. It's just bizarre. Um it was just Anyways, like this one is, of those things. Oh no, I'm getting yeah. schooled. Not yeah. for this episode. Yeah, not for this episode. Uh, but, yeah. There was one other topic we wanted to discuss before um going to the, our final thoughts. Uh Ness wanted to uh, tell us a little bit about the competitive, yeah, uh, the competitive. Oh side yeah, yeah, of, um, competitive slash speedrunning side three. too. Yeah, so um, at least like with like the competitive like PvP like meta, I feel like this like the most fresh it's been in a while. Nah, because, no um, pun intended. Fresh. <laughs> no pun totally. Intended. Okay, good. Um, because like a lot of the weapons that like you're gonna be seeing are i don't know they they really haven't had a place in the meta 
very much between like one and two. Um, but there's a lot of like interesting things that you can do in the in the game, and, like a lot of in, in, interesting like combinations. Right. It's super cool, especially with like the addition of like um, like the bow weapon class. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, it, it's just like super neat and super like interesting. Um, they added a lot of new specials this time as well, which I know factor in pretty pretty majorly. Yeah, a lot of the specials are um are like still like really useful, but um it's kind of interesting because um like some of them could like range between being totally useless and like if you know how to use it, it is like oppressive almost. Yeah. Um just because like a big part of like competitive splatoon is just like you know other than just like killing people and like positioning is like displacing like people from their team so you can get easier picks and like win team fights to like score on the on the objective yeah um things like 10 missiles <laughs> can be so spammed you've probably seen it in like opens or someone just has the reflux yeah. you know and, and and they're just walking around um, not even like swimming, just like mashing the button, and then immediately when they get missiles, they just like pop them and then do it again. And they yeah. do that for the entire like three minutes. And they're not really like attributing or anything, but because they can like displace the team with like hitting everyone with missiles constantly, yeah, you know, it's like still useful. Um, it's just annoying, yeah, yeah. Um, but like competitive is like super cool, just in general, and. If you've like ever wanted to get into it, honestly, I feel like this is like the best game to get into it with, just because, like I said, yeah, you can run most things and it'll be fine. Um, there was a tournament this last weekend. Oh yeah, um, Low Tide. Uh no no no, no uh that's Smash. Uh, it's a yeah it's it's a Smash. Um, there is, it's like, low. It's called like Low Ink, like October or whatever. Where oh. like Low Ink is just like. Uh, it's like limited divisions where like if you're too good you can't like be a part of it. Mm. Um, I've seen people like run like aerospace in that or, with which like if you're not familiar aerospace is like one of the worst weapons in the game because it's not like a bad weapon just has like n- no kill power mm. and it has a reef slider. <laughs> it's for it, it's for turf four. Yeah it, it's, it's a turf four weapon for sure. Yeah. Like people have still been get, like getting use out of it so it's like mm. that's cool. Like this is definitely like a game where you can run whatever you want and be mostly fine. What um what kind of like weapon combinations or like what builds do you like using currently? Um one like combination I really like with the with the team I'm on is uh vanilla slosher, sloshing machine, uh glugadulies, and then uh splatter shot. Mm-hmm. Where we have like a defined like mid back line, but then we're all kind of like uh we play as a unit really well, so like we just have weapons that have a really good like time to kills. <laughs> yeah. And then we also have like, you know, two buya bombs and then like ink strikes and then ink suka <laughs> or trisuka. Right. And it's just like if we want to play aggressive, we just absolutely can. And it's like so fun. Are there like are there any like general tips that you would give to someone who are who's looking to get into Splatoon competitive and, and maybe doesn't really know the game that well? Like just general like gameplay tips, I guess. There okay, so there's a lot of freedom in how you can play the game just because um, you know, by definition, I'm gonna say it, hot take, this is a movement tutor. Um yeah. oh, I agree. You can you can move like however you want, you can shoot however you want. You can get so creative with how you play the game. Mm-hmm. Just play the game till you're comfortable with like moving around, like shooting people, like not missing really, and just like even like with opens, like like by yourself. Just like as long as you can like build people that are like being a little sweaty, you're all good to like find a team with some cool people and join it. You know, play some scrims, play some tourneys. You know, have some fun because it's not like super serious if you don't want it to be super serious, right? But yeah, it's definitely like worth giving a shot, like more so than Splatoon One and Splatoon Two, especially because main savers in this game. 
what what is or that? not main saver uh main power up isn't in this game right so What's that was that? an ability in the previous game to tell me tell us how it kind of worked uh it's just if you had um if you had main power up um it would just make your main weapon do more damage oh wow oh, so yeah. like everybody would need that right yeah it was ran a lot and like um like with the bamboozler it was really popular just because like you were able to put some amount of it on the bamboozler and then just like instead of being like a dedicated two tap weapon that has like insanely fast charge um it can just one tap in like a second <laughs> yeah yeah like stuff like that like you can um you can put it on like uh some of the nozzle nose weapons and you can like kill in like half of the time that it would normally take or, or like it would kill in two pellets instead of three which is like a big difference because hitting all three is really hard right yeah so that's um, gone from yeah. three yeah that, that's gone from three hopefully it was gone from two and then they added it for some reason again yeah um hopefully it's just gone for good yeah because it makes well, they made everything a, a lot they, more interesting they made a i think they they made a note in one of the blog posts that it was gone so i'm hoping that means that they're staying the course yeah. with that um the uh the the speed running scene for splatoon 3 is kind of neat too so far i won't talk too too much about it but if you want to see the single player campaign or rather if you don't want to see much of the single player campaign mm -hmm. you can watch the uh the run for for that i know they're still figuring out plenty of stuff it's it's still early um i know yeah you can even go to speedrun.com join yep. the discord even look at the runs that are that have been like posted recently yeah usually the ones that are more recent have a lot more of the newer skips yeah especially if they're like top times so and there's different categories too out. if you don't want to do the category that has like you know pause buffering to get eggs real fast like you can there there is a you know there's a category that does not feature that um yeah there's like all levels and there's yeah there's different things there, there's a ton of stuff yeah and also i think i believe splatoon splatoon 3 got into agdq this year so it'll be yeah it did it'll be it'll be coming up um but yeah, I think honestly, overall thoughts, um, it's a, it's much better than two in a lot of small ways that add up. I think mm -hmm. is kind of yeah. I I, I didn't play it. two very much. Like I just didn't feel like playing, and I bought it, and then I was like, eh, it's it's Splatoon. Yeah, yeah, I, I felt that. What's one thing that is nice, I guess, um, you know, Splatoon <laughs> two now is like content complete, and so there's like a ton of maps and like, you know tons of stuff going on in that game this game is just starting and it looks like they're going to be adding new stuff every like three months essentially with like balance updates kind of in between um that's mm -hmm. like how long one of the catalog seasons is um yeah hopefully it's going to be coming soon just yeah. because um it's already like been a bit of time and uh i heard someone say that they were planning on doing something by the end of like september or like Wait, what comes after September? October. October. The month we're in. <laughs> I could not remember. <laughs> yeah, like, like this month or last month. Um, and it's getting close to the end of this month, so hopefully. Yeah, I hope we see something comes soon. Out. Like well, I, the end I'm not like season, bored of the current stuff, but I would like to see new maps. The end of the yeah. season is November 30th, so it's looking like it would be December that we get mm. something, or like around the end of November that we get something. Um, so it's still gonna be a bit. Um, yeah. I think they're doing it in three month intervals. Um, but I am hopeful that because of that, you know, we'll get more stuff all at once than we have in the past. Like in the past, mm -hmm. you've had updates where it's like, oh, you get a new map and there's a couple of new weapons. I'm hoping this time it's like, oh, you know, new catalog, like, you know, three new maps, a bunch of new weapons, a bunch of new decorations. I hope we get a new whatever. salmon run map at each one too. Yeah. Cause that was a thing with Splatoon 2 is like, they did not add salmon run maps until the very, very end of that game. And they were yeah, still. Yeah. It only felt like random. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I do think the starting map lineup is better in Splatoon 3, obviously, than it, than it was in previous mm -hmm. games. I'm looking forward to more of those unique maps, like the one they teased that's like that, like desert temple kind of looking one and i think uh the apartment complex is coming back from the first game uh, and oh yes I, i've been saying since splatoon Anchovy 2 heights. that that should come back and it's like my it's my favorite map from splatoon 1 what is it called like something heights yeah something heights okay not moray towers though no not moray tower 
I love Moray Towers. I Honestly, I, Moray I know Towers. a lot of people. A lot of people will probably disagree with me, but I would love to see Salt Spray Rig come back just because it's so jank. No, you're right. I disagree with you. I know you do. <laughs> um, but the the apartment complex one was probably one of my favorite maps in the first game, and I'm guessing that and the temple one will be the first that that show up. Um, I like the maps in the first game better than I like the ones in two overall. Same, yeah, honestly. Same. same. Uh, and that's glad, why I, I yeah. like in general Splatoon one a lot more than Splatoon two, even though I do two too. is like yeah probably a better game. Yeah, two is. I like just think it's better and has a lot more going on. But like, there's something about one that I just enjoy more. Yeah, I I enjoyed the multiplayer in one and the single player in one better. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's nice that so far they seem to be grabbing from Splatoon one uh maps that haven't returned yet, as opposed to like we're gonna bring this back this map back from splatoon 2 again or you know whatever like i'm glad that they're focusing on on maps that have not already been i mean didn't we covered. just get five splatoon maps that launch with it or uh well we got what was it like i know five maps were new seven were repeat but i mean in terms of like oh were the... they not all from two like, no i think okay. there's a couple that were from one i want to say but I, I can't remember right now it's i haven't yeah like hammerhead bridge i know is one of them which i know some people despise that map, but um, I think everyone despises it. But if it came back, everyone would pop off. Yeah, it. They're like, oh yes, this is the worst map of all time. I love it so much. I'm gonna like, yeah, like put salt, all of my rugby like on right spray, now. Like salt spray rig. <laughs> no, <laughs> I love people just didn't like that one. Yeah, no, I I liked that dumb one. It was just so weird and different from every other map. Probably in a bad way, but it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, um, any other final thoughts? Uh, my final thoughts are I like the game and it's like already in my top 10, ten games of all time. Wow. Nice. So like, yeah, oh, it's it's, it's definitely good. Buy it, please. Yeah, I think um I think it's the best platoon and I want to play more of it. Yeah, I got kind of busy with other stuff recently, but I want to get back into it. Because yeah. I have a lot of friends that play it too, so it's easy to find like groups for Salmon Run and yeah. multiplayer. The grind for player level is a bit lame but otherwise i really enjoy the game um even the smaller touches like the like the squid surge and like the the squid back jump or whatever in in battle like they're small things but they all add up to a lot um it definitely yeah, feels like they kind of went through and you know even though a lot of the tweaks are small they like definitely like went through every aspect of the game and kind of added things here and there and, and tweaked and fixed things to make it more enjoyable honestly yeah. just the lobby itself makes the game much more enjoyable than the previous um than splatoon 2 um just the ability to just mess around with weapons while you're waiting for a battle is like something that should have been there forever ago and i'm glad it's yeah. there now so yeah especially when i change weapons to one i haven't played in a while and yeah i i, I need a i need a quick like de rush sesh before for the game it is kind of funny that like they still have the sheldon the sheldon test map and it's like which is fine, but it's like a different map than the lobby map, which is also oh, different the, than the um, Salmon Run map. <laughs> that's the like the local multiplayer lobby map, I think. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it again, it's there's a lot of quality of life stuff and a lot of good good features. So I feel like if you like Splatoon, you're going to want the third one. Um, it's just the most balanced and, and best of them. I don't think it'll change anyone's mind if they hate the game, though. <laughs> No, if if you don't like Splatoon, it's it's still Splatoon. It's very much still Splatoon. Yeah, but I do think that it does a lot more than um, I think a lot of previews and looks at it beforehand. Yeah, um, it feels indicated. a lot more like a sequel than two did. I don't know if I would say, I don't know if two felt like a lot. Two felt like a sequel to me as well, but I I do think that three feels more substantial than maybe it appeared. Um, and I'm I I appreciate that they didn't spoil the single player in in mm -hmm. previews. So there's that. Yeah. So we'll have to see what happens with the expansion and future updates. But so far, so good. Yeah. All right. Well, that's been the Nintendo Pipeline podcast. Uh, check out all our links. Um, I think our current Discord link just changed. Uh, I think it's discord.gg slash N I N pipe, like nin pipe, nin pipe, nin yeah, pipe. crack pipe, and then we're on YouTube and Spotify, etc. Yeah, all those good places. 
Uh, anyone yeah. else have any clothing closing uh, things they need to they would like to share? Yeah. Um. Thanks, Ness, for being here. Uh, subscribe to the Nintendo Pipeline channel and join the Discord and favorite us on Spotify. We can beat Joe Rogan, <laughs> yeah. I swear. Joe Ooh. Rogan. We love reviews. Um, yeah, yes. thank you both so much for coming. One small note. N- okay. Ness, recently, this is the first week that people will be seeing it. There is a live background, a subtle live background on our uh, video mm-hmm. now. So kudos to... Not to because Ness I was too lazy to make it before. I yeah, definitely not that. Um, but but kudos to we're we're slightly improving our yeah, our you. presentation over time. <laughs> yeah. Our our production is off off, off the charts. Yeah, yeah. we'll try. Yeah. To we're we're another, so cool. Uh, we'll, we'll try to do another video thing soon too. For yeah. A while. Uh, but yeah. All right. Have a great week. Uh, have a Nintendo rific weekend and week. God. Bye bye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>